The Ground Launched Cruise Missile, or GLCM, officially designated BGM 109G Griffin, was a ground launched cruise missile developed by the United States Air Force in the last decade of the Cold War and destroyed under the INF Treaty. The U.S. Senate's version of 2017 National Defense Authorization Act authorizes funds to begin research and development of a new medium range, road mobile ground launched cruise missile system that could carry a nuclear warhead. Overview The BGM 109G was developed as a counter to the mobile MRBM and IRBM nuclear missiles, SS 20 Sabre, deployed by the Soviet Union in Eastern Bloc European countries. The GLCM and the US Army's Pershing II may have been the incentives that fostered Soviet willingness to sign the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, INF Treaty, and thus possibly reduce the threat of nuclear wars in Europe. GLCM is also a generic term for any ground-launched cruise missile. Since the US deployed only one modern cruise missile in the tactical role, the GLCM name stuck. The GLCM was built by General Dynamics. History Design and Employment A conventionally configured cruise missile, the BGM-109 was essentially a small, pilotless flying machine, powered by a turbofan engine. Unlike ballistic missiles, whose aim point is usually determined by gravitic trajectories, a cruise missile is capable of complicated aerial maneuvers, and can fly a range of predetermined flight plans. Also, it flies at much lower altitudes than a ballistic missile, typically with a terrain-hugging flight plan. The trade-off for this low observability flight is strike time, cruise missiles travel far more slowly than a ballistic weapon, and the GLCM was typical in this regard. GLCM was developed as a ground-launched variant of the Tomahawk missile in use by the US Navy, along with an undeveloped air-launched version, the medium-range air-to-surface missile, MRASM. Unlike other variants of the Tomahawk, the GLCM carried only a W84 thermonuclear warhead, no conventional capability was provided. The W84 warhead was a 0.2-150 kT variable yield weapon. This yield contrasts with the yield of the W80 warhead found on other versions of the Tomahawk and on the ALCM from which the W84 was derived, which had a selectable yield of 5 or 150 kT. The Pentagon credited the GLCM with a range of 2,000 to 2,500 kilometers. Like other U.S. cruise missiles of this period, accuracy after more than 2,000 kilometers of flight was approximately 30 meters. The missile was entirely subsonic, powered by a turbofan engine with a rocket booster assisting at launch. Militarily, the GLCM was targeted against fixed targets at the outer edge of its range, the missile's flight time with its subsonic turbofan was more than two one-half hours. The missiles were launched from an elevated launcher, with the missile ejected from its canister for about 13 seconds of solid rocket booster flight. The fins extended at 4 seconds, the air inlet and wings deployed at 10 seconds and the jet engine started at the end of the boost phase. Flying at low level, the missile was guided by TURCOM, terrain contour matching, to the target. 3. This contrasted strongly with Pershing II, which had a flight time of 10 to 15 minutes. However, the range of the GLCM gave it the ability to strike deep within then Soviet territory, and the missile guidance, and low radar cross section would have made it far more difficult to intercept a GLCM even if the launch were detected in time. BGM 109G personnel were trained at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona by the 868th Tactical Missile Training Squadron from July 1, 1981. On October 1, 1985, the squadron became part of the 868th Tactical Missile Training Group. The group and squadron were inactivated on May 31, 1990. An area near Fort Huachuca, Arizona was used for field training for GLCM flights. GLCM testing was conducted at the Dugway Proving Ground in Utah, with many of the people involved in the testing going to operational wings as they were activated. NATO Deployment and Protests BGM-109G missiles would be based at six locations throughout Europe, in the United Kingdom, 
at RAF Greenham Common and RAF Molesworth, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, and Camiso Air Station in Italy. Each location had its own unique problems, but all required extensive construction by the U.S. Air Force. Initial Operating Capability, IOC, occurred in 1983. Normal basing was in blast shelters at military installations. Each BGM-109G station was controlled by a wing that consisted of a tactical missile squadron, TMS, which was responsible for operation and deployment of the missiles, and a tactical missile maintenance squadron, TMMS, which was responsible for the support of the system. Each TMS consisted of several flights, made up of 69 people and 22 vehicles. The missile was designed to operate in a flight with 16 missiles. The flight would be normally on base, with the missiles and vehicles secured in the hardened storage area called the Gamma, GLCM Alert and Maintenance Area. Four transporter erector launchers, TEL, each carried four BGM-109G missiles in their containers and ready for launch. Two launch control centers, LCC, each with two launch officers, were connected to the telephones and interconnected for launch. Each TEL and LCC was towed by a large Mancat 18X8 tractor and was capable of traversing rough terrain. There were 16 support vehicles for the flight commander, normally a captain, 19 maintenance technicians, a medical technician and 44 security personnel. During periods of increased tension, the flights would be deployed to pre-surveyed, classified locations in the countryside away from the base. The members of the flight would dig in, erect camouflage netting to hide the vehicles and prepare for launch. Flight commanders were tasked to survey and select more than one possible deployment site, with all details closely held, and the commander selected the location preferred when the flight deployed from the base. When deployed, the flight was self-sustaining, and secured with special intrusion detection radar. The launchers, SANS warheads, were sent out on a number of simulated scrambles. Although deployed in the face of a range of Soviet IRBMs, including the brand new and extremely capable SS-20 Sabre, the GLCM, sometimes referred to by its phonetic nickname, Glick M, faced widespread public protest in Europe. Anti-nuclear groups such as the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament felt that the United States was deploying weapons meant to win a tactical nuclear war, without adequate consideration of the effects that even a victory would bring. Critics also argued that the Reagan administration was unduly escalating tensions in Central Europe. Between them, GLCM and Pershing II made a lethal combination. GLCM missiles could be launched, undetected, followed two hours later by a Pershing strike, which would fly so quickly that it was possible no response could be made before the Pershing struck. Aside from presenting a course of action to NATO commanders in the event of war, it put the Kremlin leaders, in range of the GLCM and possibly the Pershing, even in Moscow, in a position of fearing a decapitating NATO first strike, which could have moved them toward a launch on warning policy as the only way to maintain mutually assured destruction. However, the USSR did have submarine-launched missiles, i.e. Gulf and Hotel-class SSBNs armed with R-27ZYB and SSN-5S, available during this time, so any fears of a decapitating first strike were not necessarily justified. Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty Despite initial fears of greater instability, the deployment of GLCM ultimately caused Soviet leaders to enter into negotiations for, and finally signature of, the INF Treaty. The recognition by Soviet leaders of the threat posed by the GLCM and Pershing II missiles made them far more inclined to agree to negotiate their own intermediate-range weapons, especially the SS-20, out of service, in exchange for the elimination of the threat posed by the GLCM and the Pershing II. Unlike SAL-2 or START-I, which set limits to maximum nuclear arsenals, the INF Treaty banned whole categories of intermediate-range tactical nuclear weapons outright. All ground-launched cruise missiles and ballistic missiles with ranges greater than 500 but less than 5,500 kilometers were barred to the U.S. and USSR under this treaty. This meant the withdrawal of GLCM and Pershing II on the American side. 
the Soviets withdrew the GLCM's most direct counterpart, the SSC-4 or RK-55, and its supersonic follow-on, the SSC-X-5. In addition, various Soviet MRBMs, IRBMs, and LRBMs were withdrawn, the SS-4 Sandal, SS-5 Skeen, SS-12 Scaleboard, SS-20 Saber, SS-22 Scaleboard B, and SS-23 Spider. All of these equivalent weapons had been developed and deployed against NATO forces before the introduction of the GLCM, despite the categorization of the GLCM deployment by communists as aggressive. GLCM was removed from Europe beginning in 1988, and over the next three and a half years all units were transported to Davis Monthan AFB and destroyed or converted into displays by 1991. Eight missiles survive for inert static display only. No follow-on design has been authorized. U.S. Air Force BGM 109 GGLCM units. 38th Tactical Missile Wing, Pidna Missile Base, at Wushhamab, West Germany, 1985-1990. 89th TMS, 80 missiles, 50 degree 0237 and 007 degree 2532E. 303D Tactical Missile Wing, RAF Molesworth, United Kingdom, 1986-1989. 87th DMS, 64 missiles, 52 degree 2255 and 000 degree 2541W. 485th Tactical Missile Wing, Florence Air Base, Belgium, 1984-1989. 71st TMS, 48 missiles, 50 degree 1334 and 004 degree 3901E. 486th Tactical Missile Wing, Wones Direct Air Base, Netherlands, 1987 to 1988. No Tactical Missile Squadron assigned, 48 missiles assigned slash zero deployed, 51 degree 2621 and 004 degree 2109E. 487 Tactical Missile Wing, Camiso Air Base, Italy, 1983 to 1991. 302D missiles, 36 degree 5942 and 014 degree 3648E. 501st Tactical Missile Wing, RAF Greenham Common, United Kingdom, 1982 to 1991. 11th DMS, 96 missiles, 51 degree 2242 and 001 degree 1807W. 868 Tactical Missile Training Squadron, activated July 1, 1981. Assigned to 868th Tactical Missile Training Group, October 1, 1985. Consisted of 868th TM Training Squadron, 868th TM Maintenance Squadron, 868th Student Squadron. Davis Monthan AFB, Arizona, inactivated on May 31, 1990. An area near Fort Huachuca was used for field training for GLCM operations. BGM 109G Griffin, GLCM. Type Long Range, All Weather, Subsonic Tactical Slash Strategic Cruise Missile. Service History. In service 1983 to 1991. Production history. Manufacturer General Dynamics. Unit cost $1.30 mil. Specifications. Weight 1,200 kg, 2,600 pounds. Length without booster 5.56 meters, 18.2 feet. Diameter 0.52 meters, 1.7 feet. Engine Williams International F107WR400 turbofan. Using TH dimer fuel. And a solid fuel booster. Wingspan 2.67 meters, 8.8 feet. Operational. Range. 2,500 kilometers, 1,600 miles. Speed subsonic 880 kilometers per hour, 550 miles per hour. Guidance. System. Inertial, TURCOM. Launch. Platform. Transporter Erector Launcher.
Please subscribe and thanks for watching.